hey there everyone welcome to another teach kevin your thing session today we are going to be learning how to make something that most developers do not like especially me regular expressions we're going to make it workable and who's going to teach us this it's daniel hello daniel hello it's uh, really nice to see you again kevin yeah it's nice to have you back on a session um Again, I would have to say your session on Knox was just top tier. It was amazing. So glad having you here. Thank you. That's. Uh, I, I noticed you still haven't switched your website over to Knox, but uh, I think that's probably okay. Yeah, yeah. you know, uh, time and everything, but I should get to that soon. Um, yeah, so before we get into it, let's, uh, you know, we've had you before, but for folks that just seen you for the first time, could you just give us like an introduction to who Daniel Roll is? Uh, just a brief introduction to who I am and what makes me tick. Uh, so I'm I'm a maintainer of of Nuxt. I'm I'm on the, the team there. Um, that's a a framework for building web web applications uh, built on Vue three and uh, and a server framework called Nitro. Um, I'm uh, an open source maintainer more generally. So I I, I have other libraries uh, as well and things that I invest in and try and help out with. Before um, getting started in open source. I had a small a software startup helping working parents. Uh, and before that, I had, a, I, was, I had a small creative agency. So I've, I've had some experience um, around, around the place, um, but at the moment I get to um, make, make libraries, cool tools and help people as much as possible, which is something I absolutely love. Nice. Thank you, Daniel. Um, speaking about making tools, I think you've made something that's going to make our lives easier with regular expressions in JavaScript. Can you talk about that a bit? Uh, sure. So, uh, this last summer I, um, I got COVID. It was my first, uh, first time uh, with COVID and I felt, I felt rough. I felt, uh, felt terrible. Um, so I needed something to distract me. And something that has been on my mind, had been on my mind for some time, was making regular expressions uh, type checkable. Because there are lots of things that you can do wrong with regular expressions, and JavaScript doesn't help you with that. So you can have a, a global regular expression, uh, and it's not going to work in certain contexts, or it's going to, uh, it's going to keep a state um, that you might not be aware of when you're using it. Um, so at runtime, it will throw an error. Uh, but you you should be able to see that in dev time, I think. Um, and and there are other things about regular expressions that we, we sh again you should have feedback for as a developer. You should you should be able to know a little bit more about what it's going to do with the string that you have. And the rest of our experience as developers is so good in our editors these days um, that I felt regular expressions could do with an upgrade too. Um, so I set out to create a library that would be a different way of writing regular expressions um, uh, and created something called um, magic regex uh, and there are two, there are three parts to it really uh, so one is a regex builder it allows you to build a regex using uh, functional syntax and human readable um, commands and we can dive into that mm -hmm. um, and that was the bit that I, I created first that was that was quite fun um, uh, and, and then the second part is a, tr a, a compile time transform, because what I wouldn't want is to be able to create something that is less performant than the built-in regex um, global object in JavaScript, mm -hmm. which obviously any any replacement is going to be less performant than that if it's going if it's if it's transforming something into a regular expression. Mm -hmm. So the next step was to create a build time transform to compile everything you create with magic, magic regex back to a native regular expression. Mm -hmm. So you can interact with it in your dev environment with all the type safety and whatever that I can build into Magic Regex, knowing that when you build your project, there is no performance cost. It becomes a native regular expression, just as if you had written one in the first place. So it idea is best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really uh, pretty essential for me. Um, and I'll. I'm happy to show you how, how I did that as well, if mm -hmm. that would be, be nice. Yeah, sure. Uh, but I used, 
I use something um, from uh, Anthony Fu called Unplugin. Um, Unplugin lets you write uh, compile time plugins that work in lots of different uh, bundlers. So you can use the magic retract transform transform in anything that supports beat, rollup, webpack, or ES builds, um, and presumably other bundlers can be supported as well. So that means if you're using Next JS, you can use it. If you're using Nuxt, you can use it. If you're using uh, Laravel, uh, you can use it. If you're using Angular uh, with Brandon's uh, great uh, Vite based, uh, like you can use it. That, like it, it, it can be used in lots and lots of different um, mm. places without me having to specifically add support for all the different frameworks. So that was that was cool. And then the third piece, mm -hmm. which uh, basically having implemented a regular expression creator in JavaScript. I then created the uh, a regular expression creator in TypeScript, so that you can actually because what I wanted it's all very well for um, you to create a regular expression using the builder, but how do you know what what it is? Mm -hmm. What is the actual regular expression that's being created? So I wanted you to be able to hover over that command that you run and actually see the regular expression. Mm -hmm. So I was. I used basically TypeScript string literal syntax to create a visual preview of the actual regular expression that would be created when you run the command in JavaScript. So you can hover over it and see it. Mm. And then at this point, I think I open sourced it, or I think it was open sourced from the beginning, but I think I announced it at this point. And um, promptly, other amazing contributors started helping out, and particularly David Tai, I would um, absolutely um, call him out because he brought we, we then worked together to bring some really amazing type safety features. So for example, David um, added support for, uh, uh, so, so we have support. And so he added support for anonymous capture groups. And I can't recall if he did the named capture groups or whether that was me, I'm not quite sure. But basically you get, you get a type safety when it comes to the actual results of um, regu your regular expression when used in like a string match, string dot match um, mm -hmm. kind of situation. So mm -hmm. uh, if you have named groups in your regular expression, you can actually know that those will be present on the group subject. Mm. Um, and that's also true for anonymous capture groups. So every time you have uh, brackets or parentheses in a regular expression, that is an anonymous capture group. You'll um, know that when you when you run that regular expression, you get back like and an, depending on the context you run it, you might get back an array, or you might get back um, uh, some an object with some some properties that array like. And uh, and so you'll notice that you you have these different groups, and often people using regular expressions, we have to sort of count. So you you sort of see okay, well let's see that. The, the the whole whole match is the first mm -hmm. you know the zero index and then okay what's the first bracket it's this one and then okay then there's this bracket oh but this one has a bracket and then another bracket within it and it becomes quite complicated to know like which bit of the the match you're referring to when you're accessing like regular expression dot match question mark dot like, square bracket three mm -hmm. is that is that, the, is that the bit I want yeah. And um and so actually we have type safety for it. So you can you can one not access a bit of the regular expression that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And two, uh, we actually say it will be the bit that was captured by this part of the regular expression. But it's so it's difficult to talk about this without actually showing. Yeah, it. yeah, definitely. We'll get into it. <laughs> so those are the three pieces of mm -hmm. um, magic regex, which mm -hmm. is the idea is it's a type safe library um, to make creating and using regular expressions easier and safer mm, nice um you know we've been talking about regular expressions i know it you know it of course but could we do a little bit of primer for anyone watching be like what are these two folks talking about right now like just what regular expression, uh, expressions are and just basic use case so we can just get it out of the way so that is a totally valid question, and it, it clears me right <laughs> yeah. that I've, I've, I basically forgot to even mention what a regular expression is, because it's uh, it's totally strange. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and I, I found this when, when people were saying, oh, so, you know, what did you get up to over COVID? 
uh, I, I built this library for regular <laughs> expressions. And people are like, <laughs> regular expressions? What exactly is that? At least when you talk about, I, I build a web framework, you know, mm -hmm. I build a framework for building web apps. I think that's more understandable. What mm -hmm. are regular expressions? Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I, I think I would say a regular expression is a way of talking about a pattern and how to match a pattern. So um, if you are looking at some text um, and you want to, to describe um, a kind of match, kind of pattern in that text that you want to find, how do you how do you uh, describe that pattern in a brief way? So if, if you want to say match uh, a couple of characters and then uh, a number of some kind, how, how do you express that? And a regular expression is a way of expressing matching. Uh, and it has its own syntax. So there are um, special characters that match uh, a range of, of possible um, letters or, or numbers or other, other things. Um, there are some more programming language-like features, like uh, you can refer to something else that happened earlier on in the regular expression. Mm -hmm. um, Regular expressions actually have a state can can have a state, um, so they can they can actually um, track the last um, match um, that that was present when they ran, which mm -hmm. is something that is it, it um, can be a, a surprise to people. Mm -hmm. um, they um, but but in in its shortest form, it's just a very short way of expressing some kind of pattern matching and they exist in lots of programming languages um, in often very very similar syntax with relatively little, little difference i think probably i first came across regular expressions when writing scripts in Perl to crawl uh, websites um, and i i think i think i i crawled my um, university um, music library at some point and and downloaded all uh, I'll download all the stuff, and that's probably the first time I ever used a regular expression. Uh, so it's 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 used for for pattern matching, and they they have this sort of unique and sometimes impenetrable syntax. Mm. Yeah, true, true. I I've heard a lot of developers complaining how hard it is for humans to pass regular expressions. You know, they are simple ones, right? But when you really get like where you need to go advanced, you get to like, what is this? This is all gibberish and stuff. So basically, um, just for like a use case, so maybe you have like a form you want to match, um, like you want to check if a credit card number is a credit card number, you could just use a, a regular um, expression to just do that check. And it should just like just one use case, a several, a bunch of them, like kind of stuff. Yeah, so we've been going all theory and it was really hard keeping the conversation going, knowing that you have to visualize all those things in your head. So I think it's a good time to just get into the code, you know, just see regular expressions without magic rejects, then see it with magic rejects. That should be fun. Are you good to go, Daniel? Absolutely. Yeah, let's okay. go for it. All right. So here we are. So this is uh, just a, a basic editor, uh, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I'll just create a some code so we can actually, actually, I'm going to use a um, a tool called Quokka. I don't know if you've come across it before. Yeah, but it's going to actually it will give us a little bit more um, REPL um, feel um, mm -hmm. as we have a look at, at at the code. So if you're if you're creating a um, some some kind of regular expression, so uh, what what should we make a regular expression to match a phone number, for example? Mm -hmm. So I'm um, often uh, I I make my regular this is GitHub Copilot so yeah Co I think GitHub so. Copilot is 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 suggesting this okay um now uh, let's just have a look and see what this means uh, oh boy <laughs> because this is a great <laughs> example of impenetrable syntax right yep well so, what is this what's so happening a regular expression to start with is going to start and end with these slashes um and and that is that that is going to mark it out as a regular expression in, in JavaScript. Uh, you can also have some some let, special letters after mm -hmm. uh, after the that, that last slash, which are called flags and mm -hmm. affect how, how the regular expression behaves. But basically, it's between those two slashes. Mm -hmm. And then within it, you have um, a range of things going on there. So this character means a start of a string. So if I'm if I want to use this regular expression, I would do something like seven eight nine. Uh, yeah, like that. Okay, so that is going to be um, 
the way I might use this regular expression. Uh, and this will return a, a, a match uh, a match array um, or a, a match, mm -hmm. uh, an individual match. Um, I can also use it in a different kind of way. I can use it um, to, uh, to test a string like this. Mm -hmm. um, and th this is going to uh, just return a Boolean. So that will be true or false. Mm. Um, does it match or does it not match? But this match thing here is a little bit more interesting. So it, it's going to return, um, like, it's going to return a range of, of things. So if I want to actually have a, um, let me console log it. Okay, in this case, it doesn't match. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, let's write a simpler expression. Um, that's going to match that will match any character that dot is a special thing that will match any character so you see in this case um what you're getting back here is uh it's going to match any character at all mm -hmm. uh, and so it's matching the first character it's telling us that the the index in the string is zero and there were no named capture groups there okay. so so that that's that's what's coming back from the from that sort of um match expression so there's this test you can also use it in lots of other contexts too. So I could do something like uh, replace. So if I have a um, the JavaScript replace function can can just take a regular expression. So I, I, I can take that a simple regular expression I wrote and change it to x. That's fine. Um, and that's now going to replace that seven with the x. Mm. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, you, you can do lots of things. Um, the flags I mentioned, so one of the most common is to add this G. If you mm -hmm. add a G, it becomes a global expression. So it doesn't yeah. just happen once, it happens uh, uh, lots of times. So every single possible match, not just the first match. So in this case, we're replacing not just that first seven, but every single character in that string that matches any character, which is going to be all of them. So th that that would be one way of, of making that happen there. Um, the uh, and and you see it, it's also changed the behavior of this one. So now, rather than getting before we had this kind of object which gave us some inf like information, the the index of the match, it also gave us the uh, the, the specific bit that was matched, um, and there was also that groups thing. Now it's just giving us an array of each match specifically, uh, and you you could then access the same kind of thing with match all you have to then iterate over it. So you would do something like, um, and then you would be able to say, uh, in, th in this case, um, you can see uh, we have a, a, a whole, that we have one of those objects for each of the, the possible um, possible matches in that, in, that, um, uh, in that array that's generated by natural. Um, so what's going on here um, is that that, that uh, uh, caret is telling us it's going to only match the beginning of the string. So we, if we added the caret here, um, notice at the moment it is, I'll just get rid of this, which is a little bit. Uh, notice that the caret here is um, matching any character at all. If I changed it to only match any character at all after a, um, a caret, it's now only going to match the seven. Mm -hmm. um, so the uh, if I change it, so we have this dollar sign at the end. Now it's only going to match a character at the end of the string because that dollar sign means the end of a line. Mm -hmm. um, so you see, it's it's matching the the, the last one because mm -hmm. the other two don't are not at the end of the line. Okay. Um, so even already, you can see this is quite a powerful syntax in quite a short uh, short bit of of time. Mm -hmm. like a um, sh short uh, space in a few characters. Um, there's there's more stuff, obviously, that you, you can do. So maybe you don't just want to match any character at all. Maybe you want to make that a very specific um, range of characters. So we might want to say, I want to match any number. So that D, backslash D, is a number. Um, you could also match like, a word character, which is going to be a backslash uh, uh, any any sort of um, word character which will will include numbers but also letters in this case, mm -hmm. so it's going to it could match that a, but the d wouldn't the d would would um, 
would do uh, nothing. Yeah, because I'm it's not, not sure a number. Sure. Yeah, because yeah. it's not a number. Mm -hmm. like, exactly. Um, and S is going to match some kind of white space. Mm -hmm. So like a, a space at the end or maybe a, a, a tab. If I, if I had a, a tab there, it, it would match that tab as well. So there are a number of special characters like this, which you have a backslash, but you can have a, a like, look up and find out what other things we can match specifically. Mm -hmm. um, for more advanced use cases, you can you can use these square brackets to define a, um, no matter how much I put in here, it's all, only going to match one one character, but I can, I can list specific things that I want to match. So I, I only want to match uh, seven and nine, for example. So if you have a look now, it's, it's matching just that seven and the nine in that string. Uh, I could also do a range, so seven to nine, anything in that range. And you see it's matching all of the, those numbers there. Um, mm. And, and the, there's lots more you can do. I, I want to match everything. If you put a carrot in this case, everything but. So I want to match everything but eight. Mm. Uh, and now it's not matching the eight, but everything else. So there's a lot of a lot of power uh, here in the in the um, in the toolbox of ma of magic. Uh, sorry, of re regular expressions. Mm -hmm. um, and if we were to go up and have a look at this phone regular expression, which GitHub Copilot generated for us, um, that is looking for um, something at the beginning of the line of the string, which is either has. Oh, I should say with this question mark this. Um, so if you have a uh, some kind of character that you're matching, like this one, you can say that you want that to, to occur more than once, um, or you can say that it might not occur at all. So maybe I want to match uh, eight, um, and uh, uh, let, let, let's do this. I want to match one. Well, one isn't in this at all. There's no match. Uh, so I can put a question mark in, and now, it's going to say I'm looking for one, but that one doesn't have to be there. It's optional. Mm -hmm. I could also say I, I, I want I, I'm going to match the one, but only if it occurs um, once or more times. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it will match seven. But if I keep on typing seven, it's still going to match because it can occur any number of times, at least mm -hmm. as long as it's at least one. You can also use a star, which is going to match. Um, it's like the question mark, but it it's like combining the question mark and the plus. So the star means it will match it if it's not there at all. It will also match it no matter how many times it's there. So in this case, you see every character here is uh, is being being matched because mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's matching the bunch of sevens, it's matching the eight, the nine, and the a because they are all uh, or they are all or between them anyway. It's matching that that, mm -hmm. that character. I put the dot in. It's going to be a little bit clearer. Yeah. Um, so in this case, we're saying that we want to have in the here um, at the beginning of the line, we might have plus one. Might be there, mm. or it might not be. Um, there might be a. It might be a plus one. It might be just a one on its own, or it might be nothing at all. Um, this is obviously an American centric regular expression that, get, that, that uh, GitHub has generated for us, because that's the country, cub, country code for the US and Canada. Um, but, uh, but you see, that's, that's the bit. So mm -hmm. plus, we have to uh, escape it, because it's a sp it has a meaning in the context of regular expressions. Mm -hmm. It may or may not be there. That's the question mark. Then a one. And then the whole thing, we're, we're wrapping up in, this, uh, in those brackets. That whole thing uh, may or may not be there. That's the question mark. So um, now this is that thing I was mentioning a moment ago. That's an anonymous uh, capture group. So if I were to uh, just do this uh, test again, but put plus one in, uh, let's see if that's going to match it for us. So uh, oh, it's still not matching. Let's uh, just get rid of these dashes. I actually want is to use match so you can see the full info. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't fully looked at the rest of the yeah, I like string. This. So um, what it is saying? Okay, let's see. Let's see the rest of the string, and then we can get get us to match for us. Uh, 
I, I think the last bit is expecting six digits. You're right. How strange. Yeah. Um, this is a very weird, weird regex, but I think we were probably going to disagree with GitHub Copilot on this. Yeah. Even for, for the US. So, okay, mm -hmm. what it's saying is that we, we're expecting this one or plus one, mm -hmm. uh, maybe. And then the next bit is going to be a number from two to nine. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not another one. So it's got to be uh, a two to nine. Yeah, so, and um, two we'll digits. Say three. Uh, and then it wants, uh, yeah, and, and then, yeah, exactly. That, that's is going to be another number, but this time it could be any number, mm -hmm. including one, I guess, yeah. and two more of them. Yeah. So we could have two more numbers. Mm -hmm. And then another two to nine, uh, so two, uh, and then it's this is uh, is is an interesting yeah. <laughs> so it was, I don't know what it's, it's doing there really. So this is saying that we should that this shouldn't be followed by, um, so it can't be followed by eleven. Yeah. Um, and I think probably what it's trying to to detect is something like nine one one. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. I, I actually, I actually have no, no real idea why. Um, so it's it, it's it's saying that we have this this next number. There should not be eleven after that, mm -hmm. and then there should be six more numbers. Yeah. So um, now one, two, three, four, five, six. That's what it's it's saying. It should it should look. Okay, so we've got a regular a phone number that we've generated this way. So it's one and then a three digit uh, area code, I think, in the US, and then three digits and then uh, four at the end. Um, and so we can see that it's matching our phone regular expression here. So okay. um, what, what we've got is uh, is this sort of match array. Mm -hmm. um, now the match array has the, uh, you see it, it has the first entry is the entire string. Uh, and then the next entry is plus one. You might think, why plus one? And the answer is that it's because it's in these brackets, in these these parentheses. Oh yes. Um, we're saying we're saying this is something that we want to to match. Uh, okay. We we want to store it as a match. Yeah. Now one of the and now often people don't want to. They in this case it's only in brackets really because we want to be able to apply the question mark to the entire thing. Mm -hmm. But often people um. Uh, are, are capturing that and they, they don't really need to. Um, it's actually possible not to capture it. Um, if you put a question mark uh, a colon, you can create a non-capture group, um, which is actually more performant, as you might think. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it, it basically means in this case, now we're just matching the entire thing and not the individual pieces of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but maybe you do want uh, to capture things. Maybe this is that you want to capture the, the country code. Um, so in, in this case, uh, you could do something like, okay, we don't want to capture the, the plus, uh, but we do want to capture this, the, the one, because that's our country code. Uh, and then we want to capture the next three digits because that's our area code in, in American mm -hmm. terms. Uh, and then we want to capture the last uh, what is it, seven digits because that's the, um, the, like the rest of the phone number. And so if you, if you did something like that, you would, you would see we've done that. We've captured the first, the country code, not the plus. We weren't interested in that, just the mm -hmm. country code. We've mm -hmm. captured the, the, the area code. We've captured the rest of the phone number. Um, but if you're looking at that regular expression, it's really quite uh, difficult uh, to read again, because we, well, at this point, you're getting lots of lots and lots of, uh, of, of curly braces, the, the, the brackets, parentheses in there. So you might decide that what you want to do is name them, uh, and then you'll get this, this named capture group object. So I could say something like uh, country, uh, and that the sort of question mark angle bracket is going to, this is going to be a, a country now. And so if you see that the match that's coming back, I now have this groups object, and it's mm -hmm. got this country one in there. That is already a nice quality of life improvement for me. And I, I'd say maybe mm -hmm. this is area mm -hmm. and, uh, rest something like that and so so again if i hover over that now everything is nicely put for me into those into that groups object and, mm. and so and so i i could i could do something like um const uh, country equals um let's try that and uh, i would need to provide a fallback because if it doesn't match it will be null and there won't be any groups on it at all 
So this way, I just get this beautiful little object of what I what I care about, uh, and and you see, I can I can put country there. But I I could also, and this is part of the point, I could put anything there. There's there's mm. no type safety for me in terms of um, a JavaScript. It's it's not going to help me at all um, when it comes to uh, these named groups. But they, but they are they are really really cool uh, things. Nice. Um, I might also um, say that uh, maybe our phone number is going to want to do other things like so maybe do we want to support like dashes or spaces in between the different bits of it so we could we could do something like um, we are either going to have uh, at this point we could have a space or a dash but optionally mm -hmm. uh, and then we could stick that uh, also between the area code and the rest. Um, so now it's, uh, let's see, I'll just make this a little bit more uh, readable for our um, REPL. So we can basically see it's, okay, it's matching it. Um, now if I add in a dash, still matches it, still matches it, still matches it. Oh no, it doesn't. No, no. I done? Oh, because I actually said the entire rest of the string yes. was uh, one one piece. So, but you see that I could I could put these these dashes, I could put some spaces in, uh, and it's still pulling out the bits that I care about. Nice. Um, we could also um, do a little bit more, maybe. So sometimes uh, the way a way a US phone number is is written, uh, it might be written like this for with with um, um, parentheses around the area code. Um, so I could say, uh, okay, so we could have a parenthesis like that. Uh, and we could also have a parenthesis at the other side. Uh, and now I can, I can do that and it's still going to work. So the, the, again, the, there's lots of things that you can, you can do or put into a regular expression to match a pattern that you want to find. Um, but, uh, and gives you a huge amount of control. Uh, named capture groups already improve the readability hugely. Mm -hmm. Imagine I didn't have those at, at all. This would be just impossible, yeah. right? So if I, if I got rid of those, it's still working. And lots of people write regular expressions without named capture groups. Um, I, I would say always use named capture groups if you can. Um, but that, that's just impossible. And one of the things about it is that you can't really easily test it. Mm -hmm. So, um, and uh, and this is actually something that is not solved by uh, Magic Regex, or at least not yet, but there's no way of getting code coverage for a regular expression. So if you were to perform the same test in uh, something like, um, you know, if um, if A equals, uh, you know, dash, then so if, you, if you were to turn this regular expression into code, into if-then statements, and run a code coverage test on it, you would be able to see which bits you were testing and which bits you weren't testing. Um, because you, you'd be able to sort of, your code coverage tool would say, well, this statement's never getting called. But, and this is just a, a thing at the moment for regular expressions. I hope to change it with Magic Regex, but mm -hmm. um, you, you, you're just not able to tell like what's going on here. So it's really easy for bugs to creep into regular expressions. Um, maybe, uh, Maybe it's it's a, a simple thing. Maybe, for example, this, this is a really common bug. Maybe I want to um, to test a domain name. So uh, I have a regular expression, um, and and I, I just want to uh, to detect uh, to check you know the the domain. It's going to be anything there, uh, and then uh, uh, dot com at the end, uh, and and that that's that's what I I want to test. And so I'm going to just have a quick look. Um, what's what's coming out? Here, um, uh, oh, and uh, let, let's make it something like a uh, big commerce. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what what are we going to? We're going to uh, drop that cheekily at the end. Um, what are we going to to to, to match? Uh, and and the answer is um, that we are actually going to match actually. I've written this in such a way it's still going to match. What I'm trying to, to, to show is that it's easy to put a full stop in without realizing that that's necessarily going to match any character. So in this case, um, .com is actually going to match gcom from big commas. 
Uh, there are lots of, 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 of typos and things that you can, can put into a regular expression. Um, and yeah, that would be that would be one of them. Oh, nice. So should I show you Magic Red Expo? Yes, I think that we've seen, you know, I must give it to you. You make regex look easy. <laughs> <laughs> like really, it does look easy when you're doing it. But let's see how magic regex make it super magical. Let me see. Have I installed it yet? I haven't. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the first step is to install magic regex, um, which uh, you can just do. In this case, I have pmpm, but you can uh, do it with any package manager. Um, and we'll import from it. So um, the key thing uh, is this create regex function that's going to come in from magic regex. Okay. So we could do something like um, uh, new phone, sorry, is going to be uh, create regex. Okay. Um, now we have to, uh, that's a, a, a failing because we have to pass it some kind of input. So um, by default, when you, um, when you uh, use magic regex, everything is escaped. So you don't have to worry about uh, so, for example, I, if I drop that escape there, um, I've introduced a bug into this um, okay. at this point because um, by, by dropping it, it's now behaving like a, a, a special character. So if you actually then have a look at, at what's being logged here, it is that. Okay. That's yeah. not what we wanted to log, right? That, yeah. that is not right. Um, if I then add the... the uh, um, escape back then it's going to be a different different matter what what is going on anyway uh -huh. why is this yeah did we mess up the regex right? so we mess it up is it the uh, braces it you have walker? in the inputs all right maybe it is Uh, maybe we did. What, what, what have we done? Maybe we something. We delved uh, too deep. Yeah. Too far. The um. So we said we didn't want a capturing group. We should let's just log the whole thing. Okay, so we are getting it. But yeah. No um named. Not getting. Oh, we removed them. We specifically removed them because I wanted to show how it could be unreadable. Yes. Yes, <laughs> so we did. Let, 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 let's 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 stick them back in again. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. So uh, say we had area and we had, um, what are we capturing next? Uh, no, country and area and then rest, right? So now, we, now we've got our, now we've got our groups again, thank goodness. Okay, so we, we, we've got our, our, our groups. Um, uh, and I was saying it's really easy to, to, to create bugs and, and, yeah. and stick them in there. Yes, um, it because is. At, at, at this point, that uh, that plus is not going to match, but it's going to match even if I if I what have I done? Maybe it's maybe it's fine. Okay, um, so let's create a new regex um, this way. So if I want to to match say dot com, um, I just can pass it. If it's just a string, a direct string, I can pass it straight into create regex, um, and I can do something like um, uh, console log. Um, big commerce because remember this this um, was a, a bug previously with that that um, that dot. Mm -hmm. If we weren't thinking about it, it failed. Um, hey, what, what that's going to do? Uh, it's it's not matching at all because there's no dot com. If mm -hmm. I put dot com at the end, it's going to match the dot com and mm -hmm. and only. So everything is escaped. Mm -hmm. If you hover over the actual regex that's being created here, that's not being produced by the uh, by Quaka, um, like as the console logs are. That that is actually just the TypeScript type, mm -hmm. and it's telling us that the actual types TypeScript type is going to be uh, this, um, which is not quite right, is it? Should be should give us a little escape there. Yeah. Um, I, uh, that that might be. We have a, another utility called exactly, which may fix that for me. Yeah, that's right. That's going to print, print the right, right mm. stuff there. But that is, that's actually a bug in Magic Regex. It should mm -hmm. print it either way. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
So say I want to create um, this, this, um, this same reg regular expression with, with magic regex. We've mm -hmm. got lots of utilities like uh, exactly. Um, we also have got things like any of, carriage return, case insensitive, um, uh, white space, word, word, car, stuff like that. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and it's chainable. So what we care about here is that for this first group. So we want, um, we want to do exactly plus, right? Um, but it's optional. So we can say optionally. Um, and that's going to give, give uh, us that regular expression, right? Which is oh. what we want. Okay. Um, and uh, then we probably want this, the uh, and uh, one, um, which is, again, we probably should change this regular expression so it's not American centric, but for the moment it is. So, and, and one, uh, but ideally what we would like to do is, so that's it's, it's adding up, right? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's the one, mm -hmm. uh, the whole thing should be optional. Okay. Um, uh, the whole thing. So, um, the, the plus and, and the one, so that, that can be, uh, optional. Um, and just checking. Yeah. It's all looking good. Um, we might want to refer to that one though. So, uh, we can say, um, as or grouped as whatever you prefer. Uh, we can say as country. Okay. So, okay. Uh, quick one. You know we are grouping everything to be optional. Should we take out the the chain of the optionally after plus? Interesting, because if we if we did that, then it will only match with okay. plus one. But this oh. way, it matches either with plus one or oh, okay. with one. So okay. it's. But I mean, it's yeah. So I think mm -hmm. I think probably we want that. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, now at the, at the moment, if now if we if we do a, a little little um, test, so this for example. I'll uh, new groups mm -hmm. and pop that in there. Um, we should see now. This is TypeScript um, helping us at this point. Uh, we should see that we have. Uh, we have to test it um, to see if it exists. That we have a country property on the result. So we know that it's going to return country and nothing else. And that country is going to be a string or undefined. If I tried to access some other thing, uh, some other property, it's going to tell us that doesn't exist. It's not going to be returned from that regular expression. So if I later change this out uh, to country code uh, and I'm still accessing country, then in my type check, it's going to tell me that I'm accessing the wrong thing, yeah. um, which isn't a, a good quality of life yeah. immediately. Um, okay, let's add a little bit more uh, before we, we do, do too much. So th that whole thing is optionally um, that we're going to chain a um, uh, an, an and, so something else here. And what's the next bit? It can either be a space or a dash. Um, so we're going to use this car. Um, uh, we, we specifically want car in. Okay, so we want car in, uh, and we either want to have space or a dash, uh, and that is also going to be optionally. Um, GitHub Copilot is helping us there. Um, and yeah, that's right. And now we want to have this next bit, the area code. Um, this is where I really want prettier to format this for me. So everything is nicely indented because right now it's starting to get on my nerves, but basically what's the best way of doing it? Let's, let's stick this up on a single line. There we go. So this is our, our first thing that, that was optional. Um, the country code. Now we want the bit in between, uh, and that is optional. Uh, and what's, what's next? We now want, and mm -hmm. uh, our area code, right? So yeah. we want that's going to be um, car in 
Uh, do we have a between? Huh, I should probably make a car between or something like that. Oh no, I we should probably make a car between. Um, okay, we're going to do and one of those characters. And digit, we've got a, a special um, in, import for that. Uh, and a digit times two. Okay, that whole thing, we are probably going to want to capture as well. So that can be captured as area. Uh, and then we're going to do pretty much exactly the same thing. Digit times six as rest. Okay, now this isn't exactly the same regular expression so far, no. um, but basically we have our sort of bits of the regular expression and it's uh, adding oh. up. Okay. It's adding up. It's adding up. Um, let's see. So I think we probably want to do this. See, is that right? Okay, so we've got our country, we've got the space, got our area code, and then we've got, oh, we didn't add another space, which we might want to allow. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've got uh, the rest. Um, so this so far is going to work pretty similar. So if we are going to have a look at our new groups, um, we what we should see is, that we've got uh, this rec. Oh, I forgot. There's one thing. We have to. Uh, no, no, I'm right. Um, okay. So why is it not showing this? Oh, this is that's just the, the two string. So we basically have this record here: mm -hmm. country, area, rest, string. Um. Okay, and if we were going to use that in a um, in a regular expression, it it will it will give us what we what we're looking for: area, country, or rest. Um, there are a couple of things we want to to add in here. We want to add in the fact that this is at the beginning of the line, so we can say that. Um, well, we can basically say that the entire expression that we're looking at so far is um, at line end uh, and at line start. Um, so the whole thing is there. And we could probably make add all the, the, the other specific bits of that regular um, expression in there. What else would we need? Is there anything else that I'm missing? Oh, not the not. Yeah, we left. After. That is um, okay. So we can we can we can do that. So not before uh, eleven. Uh, again, I'm I'm really not sure why that is is the case. It doesn't feel right to me. But anyway, we can we can do it, mm -hmm. um, and it will it will it will match that for us. Nice. Um, okay. Now there's some things that we could you can get wrong with regular expressions. So you could say um, for const match of um, this. Now this is going to fail. Um, well, actually we have to do match all, right? Um, mm -hmm. Match all is, is, you can normally do this. Why is this complaining? Um, and the answer is that match all has to be called with a global flag. Now, if we were doing this with our old um, regular, uh, regular expression, it's going to let us do it, but it it will error on runtime. This is going to throw throw an error, and probably if I were to do something like um, not sure if this will run or not, it doesn't run in Quaker because this is throwing a runtime error. <laughs> um, so, whereas I think if I comment that out, it'll probably probably be fine. Um, oh, it's, it's, this is also throwing a runtime error, but it's telling me about it. Um, so mm -hmm. you see now it's now it's it's running. That's that's great. Um, 
And this is saying you have to use a global flag. So if I want to, to make this a, a global regular expression to capture every single um, example, um, I can pass a G uh, as an array, I think. There we go. And so I've added this G as a flag. Um, and it's going to now accept this kind of syntax. It's going to now, I'm going to have type safety on that match. The match is going to be, um, uh, if I were to access like match dot, it's telling me it's got three, um, uh, four anonymous uh, capture groups there. Um, and I, could I access groups? Yes, I can access groups like that. Yeah. But you notice now it's throwing an error up here. Um, now th these are all good errors, right? This is mm -hmm. telling me that it's not going to have a groups property because mm -hmm. if I call match with a global regular expression, it's going to give me an array of strings. It's not going to give me anything with a groups object at all because um, it could be matching multiple times. There's not going to be a single groups object on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the kind of type safety that we, we would have. Whereas if, if we just added a, a G up here, um, like you, the groups is it's not there anymore. Um, I've just mm -hmm. got rid of it by adding that G, but but we don't know that. We're not receiving any feedback from um, JavaScript that that's going to be the case. Whereas with um, Magic Regex, we actually get that type safety. We know that groups isn't going to exist if we add that G flag. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have the G flag, we know that match all is not going to work. Um, so there's some, some really useful uh, things um, like that, um, where we are, are actually able to, to detect um, errors that are going to happen and, um, and tell, tell the user, even when they're just using normal JavaScript syntax like match, uh, that's, that's just a global JavaScript or, or match all, um, because we've actually extended, uh, within Magic Regex, we've extended that, we've created some crazy types uh, in here to extend it and basically um, highlight mistakes that people might make before they, they know that they've made them. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. This is cool. And uh, especially because of the type safety, because the DX is now good, then you could always know what groups you have in there. And um, if you update it, there will be no calling of groups that were not in your groups. It's amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. that should that is exactly what we want. Um, want to be the case. Yeah. Good. This is good. So, um, uh, just a quick one. I know probably is it you know in our regex without magic regex we're able to do two to nine. Is it still possible in here, or we we'll just have to manually type the values as we're doing the character um, in? So it it's a it's a total um mm -hmm. total gap. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, we, we, I can add a PR later today and add that in because that, that does make sense. It does yeah. make, oh, mm -hmm. wait, let me just check. Sometimes I find that I have implemented these things and forgotten. <laughs> okay. Let's see, can we, do we have a, a, a tool on digit? Oh, my editor's yeah. complaining at me. Uh, what, where would I do it? A digit? I don't think I have a between. I think, I, I think, I think it doesn't, it doesn't mm -hmm. exist, but it well, should, it, it well, should. Yeah. That's fine. It's really good stuff and um, removes the whole, um, you know, the strange syntax of regex. And then we could just call these utility methods on the create regex and just build something cool. Yeah, I think I've got a, I've got a between that is basically that is basically, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a, no, I basically need, need to, to implement. implement yeah, this quickly, so. sure. That, that's fine. Thank you for that. Yeah. Sure <laughs> it's thing. always good to get out. Yeah. I just made my first impression on magic with Jesp. <laughs> that's right. Mm -hmm. What would you call it? Car between? Is that the most? Well, I'm I'm thinking, yeah, probably characters between. Mm -hmm, then, then it would need a chain because maybe it takes the first character, maybe like two, then maybe like a dot two. Oh, I don't know. Okay, 
maybe it might just take two arguments to start and the end, which is shorter and better. Like that? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's nice API. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's make it happen. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, but it is good. So let's let's mash something else pretty quickly. So okay. let's yeah, let's say you want um like this is like an uh, so I have a string, let's say like an email, right? Okay. And I want to match everything between like just the uh, maybe Kelvin at gmail.com. I want to match Kelvin and sort of like just change it to something, maybe X, I don't know, or Y, and leave the, the rest bits. Okay. So mm-hmm. um, you've got a domain. So Kelvin mm-hmm. at Kelvin. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll just, okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. Daddy, yeah. Daddy we, we only mm-hmm. We only want to have the, the domain. Is that right? No, just the uh, my the the Kelv- everything before the at like I want to match that and turn it into like just replace the string like sort of like a masking feature. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and we want the yeah. rest just to be like dot x x yes. x x dot x x. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll call it a mask, and we'll uh create a regex. Um, what we want is any um, we're going to want okay. any word character mm-hmm. um probably i think that's that's what we want one um times yeah. uh any so a- any number of times any okay. word character mm-hmm. and uh then we want to have uh this at symbol so mm-hmm. we'll use exactly mm-hmm. uh and actually do, do we want anything else? It, it could be basically any character at this point. So we'll just stick mm-hmm. uh, and car times any yeah. at line end. Okay. That's uh, and we, we, this one can also be at um, line start. starts. Okay. So that should give us a regular expression that looks a little bit like this. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the regular expression, I'll just copy and paste that. So it's this. So it should look, and it's uh, sk- double escaped because it's um, in in the uh, the pop up. Um, so we we have at the line start, we have a word character there, uh, any number of times, then an at, and then any more characters uh, fully to the end of the string. And if we then match that, so um, console log mask re uh, oh, right email okay. dot match. Right. So this should now give us what we are getting from this. Why is it not giving me anything? Mm-hmm. I want Quaka. Yeah. Quaka. Quaka's not doing anything on me. What have I just dis- if I disabled it? I thought I disabled copilot. Yeah, I thought you did that too. Let's start a new TypeScript file. Okay. Okay. It's working for me now. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what the extension was just complaining. Okay, so we basically have we match we have the entire match. Uh and oh, we've not just said we want to capture this, but we, we do, right? We want to capture yes. this as yes. um and we, we can we can group it mm-hmm. as um or we we could use I personally do like as so we could say username. Mm-hmm. Um so now this is going to be our uh username. It's going to be Calvin now. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we, we get access there. But but if if the thing that you want to match is the the bit at the end, um, and you want to to replace it, mm-hmm. then we can also implement it that way. But th- this will match the entire entire mm-hmm. string. What what do we want to do? Should we should, do we want to mask out the domain? Oh, uh, we we want to mask out the username. So I guess we're already there. Oh, the username. Yeah. Okay. So um, one one way you can actually do this is to use the um, the power of look ahead and um, look behind. So um, and and if you, it, 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 in Magic Regex it's done by just saying uh, not after or not before uh, mm-hmm. or before or after. Mm-hmm. In this case, what 
but but the, the the thing is that it will then effectively treat the whole regex as the pattern, but it will only return the bit um, okay. that you're interested in. So here we're only interested in this. Mm -hmm. So we can actually drop the as. This is all we want to have. We want that at line end, and then mm -hmm. we could say ah uh, before this. So before at and something else at the line end. Mm -hmm. So at this point, what we're basically saying is, this is this is the regular expression here. We're mm -hmm. saying we want to match only the, the word bit at the beginning before that at the end. Mm -hmm. So that should, I think, match for us just, oh, I've put the bracket in the wrong place here. That should match for us just your username. Oh, nice. So, because um, that's all already we want to have. So we don't even need at this point named uh, capture groups. We mm -hmm. just want to say we are, we're looking for this at the beginning before something else that looks a bit like that. Okay. So what we would be able to do if, if you then wanted to implement it um, is say email dot replace mask re xxx. And that's going to give you um, that's going to give you xxx at kelvin.com, which is what, what you wanted. Mm, nice. So what if I want to match? I don't okay by the number of characters. So it's yeah, instead of just hard coding the xxx. Now that's okay, tricky. In, right? that case, in that case, we actually get um, we can pass a function um, through. Um, I mean, there are, there are infinite ways of doing this, but in this okay. particular case, um, the function parameter here is going to be the match. So it's going to come in with Kelvin. Mm -hmm. So we could actually just say something like, we want to um, replace it with, uh, we could have to do another, another replace if we wanted to, another okay. match. Um, but basically you want to say, um, so you, 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 you could do this. Mm -hmm. Um, so that is going to and G. replace each character. So it's going to mm. take Kelvin as an argument, and then you're going to replace each character with an X. That oh. would be one thing you could do. Um, you could also um, see what else could you do. You could probably do something like um, you could use string pad end. Mm -hmm. So um, this will okay do the same uh, it, it, it may be a bit of a hack but basically you can have this pad end function or mm -hmm. pad start which is going to extend the length of a string until it reaches the um uh the desired length mm -hmm. uh, and you can pass the character that you want to do it so in this case running a regular expression on that kelvin seems a, like that seems like it's going to be more yeah. um that's less performant than this, which is just add a couple of add some x's to an empty string mm -hmm. um, to the to the, the the desired length. So that would be a, a reasonable solution, I think. Okay, so you're saying the regex is less performant than the pi end? Uh, in, well, in this case, if if I if I mm -hmm. have something like uh, Kelvin and I just want to replace every character with an x, mm -hmm. um, I mean it's an interesting question. Yeah. So replacing every character with an x or uh kelvin or, or uh this so those those are those are my two options and mm -hmm. i actually do not know which one is going to be more performant i could okay. i could make a, a benchmark on it mm -hmm. um but that, that is a this is an interesting question yeah I, like i'm always it's the book I just finished reading that does something to me. I'm always thinking about performance JavaScript code. I, I, I was thinking that probably the you know there's still one more one more way we could do that would be dot repeat. Yeah. And just take the length of the of Kelvin and just repeat the X on it. And that's definitely a nice yeah, nice yes. option. So I so we don't now we have too many options really. Ah. I would I would say that dot repeat is definitely nicer than pad end actually yeah. because it's mm -hmm. well I mean 
and and I was going to say this as well. Like readability is a significant benefit um, mm -hmm. or or um, detriment in some kind of in in this kind of situation. And so yeah. um, this is better than that. So dot replace is better because it expresses what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, pad end is not. Uh, yeah. like repeat repeat is better than pad end for sure in terms of expressing what what it is that you want to to be mm -hmm. achieving but i would even say that replace is better than repeat in terms of readability yes. i think it feels to me like it would be less performant okay because it, uh, because it feels to me like what it it will do is loop over that string mm -hmm. and each time it finds a match it will replace it now that that's my instinct and i, I actually haven't tested that whereas it mm -hmm. feels like x dot repeat is not going to loop over anything it's just going to add x's to a string yeah interesting um, so it, this is yeah. interesting but yeah. there are some mm -hmm. some strange things and often it's not worth doing it but but you know doing this mm -hmm. um uh so so if i if i have uh, variables um a and b Mm -hmm. And I do this. Mm -hmm. um, that is less performant okay. than doing this. Really? It is. Wow, but having but said that, yeah, now, this one looks more with, readable. But exactly, readability matters. Oh. And in this case, I would always go for A, unless mm -hmm. I'm writing something where tiny gains in performance make it make a big difference but a uh, uh sorry i would i would go for c, c, for c yeah like sure. that the, the, that that is that is going to be much more understandable like if you're mm -hmm. reading through the code than if you're passing this because the like the spaces um mm -hmm. the pluses the yeah quotes it all mm -hmm. adds to, to just make this less easy to intuit when you yeah. come to it and that makes it makes a huge difference so mm -hmm. it's it's always tricky when you're yeah doing yep. performance mm -hmm. golf yeah like i think for tooling or library makers like yourself you would want to go for the more performant and maybe for more user-friendly code you might want to go for c like maybe like yeah. um let's say for for builders that are just making UIs and just not um, at the lower level like you're doing with your package, you might opt for C because it's more readable. But if you want to do mm. more performance stuff, you might opt for D because it's like a low level and you just don't want to hurt the the consumer's um, stuff. That's that's so much well, trade-offs to think of. <laughs> it's 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 really tricky. I mean, if you mm -hmm. have a look at things like uh, the Node, uh, Node code base, mm -hmm. there's lots of stuff in there that is really hard to read and um and non-intuitive um mm -hmm. but chosen for performance reasons because of how the underlying v8 engine is behaving um so it's and it's it's a it's it, it yeah i i would say that you you want to make those choices when you're creating some kind of low level library where mm -hmm. performance you know is is essential like something like node.js or mm -hmm. some kind of library that's going to get called lots and lots and lots of times like we're talking about Mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of times yeah. but in in the vast majority of cases most devs are not they don't need to care about that tiny fraction of difference uh, and the other thing of course is that these things change mm -hmm. so um like you, you can you can figure out um that you know um hack one is faster because of the way that the the language current the v8 um engine currently mm -hmm. handles or optimizes it but in fact um, the optimization change all the time to mm -hmm. match what developers are using. <laughs> yeah. So it you can you can write something you think is super performant and it is, and then two months yeah. later a patch comes to the V8 engine and it's no longer super performant. Yeah. And now you're left with unreadable code yeah. that is not actually the fastest way of doing things. Wow. So. Yeah, and yes, that that's totally make a lot of sense. To I think it's it's better to err in the side of readable code because for easy to maintain, it makes the code more easy to maintain. And because if if I just come into this code base and I see dot pad end, I'll be like, hmm, what is dot pad end? I'll go look out for it. But if I see replace or repeat, it's sort of like 
intuitive to want to think, okay, this is what the code would do. But by the end, you want to go and check if there are extra things to do in there or what are the arguments it will take or I just don't know. Like, it's not as easy to read and to pass than, than um, replace. And again, when we argue about um, performance, like, how much time are we really losing, really? Like, is this like a very huge gap in the two code? Or just something minuscule that would even be noticeable at the end of the day. Sorry, run, run that by me again. Yeah, like if we're thinking about how uh, performance dot replace and dot pattern is, are we talking about a huge gap of like seconds or minutes or something really small that you wouldn't even notice? And and all uh, honestly, mm -hmm. I do not know. Mm -hmm. um, let let's see if I can I can figure out get, get a benchmarking tool because there's some there's some interesting ones um, that you can run in in the browser. So um, if I share my screen um, and we open up this, let's see, can I have a second screen? Mm -hmm. Maybe I just out. Let's try this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a cool uh, benchmarking tool. So it's going to let us just run um, two bits of code in, in the browser. So we can actually just try it. And mm -hmm. they might not be different. So we have kelvin.replace, and we have x repeat kelvin length. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What do you think it's going to be? Which one are you voting on? <laughs> repeats, I think. I, I, I agree. I'm totally on, on, on the side of repeat. Let's mm -hmm. give it a go. Oh wow! This is Ooh, a cool tool. I think repeat is winning. That's what yeah, I yeah. Repeat won already <laughs> by a total. Oh my mile. god! Like that is so much faster. <laughs> now, out of curiosity, what? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> out of curiosity, should we see what pad end would do? Yeah, so let's repeat, see what pad end would like, do. Because, like, we all agree, pad end is not as good. Um. Mm -hmm. But is it faster? Oh my god! Like I was thinking, the difference wouldn't be that much, but that's too much of a difference. It's a huge difference. And it's possible to write mm -hmm, write mm -hmm. regular expressions, by the way, that have huge performance problems. And there's some ESLint rules. Um, check out ESLint plugin Unicorn, which has got mm -hmm. some really good ones, which yeah. will help you avoid writing writing the bad ones. Let's see, oh, oh, oh okay, oh. they are close, and repeat is still winning. <laughs> <laughs> it's not only more readable, it's also more performant. So absolutely go for it every what? step and, of the day. And I think this is like with uh, uh, replace, it's going to be like an N plus one problem. That means the longer the string, the more terrible it's going to perform. That's that's something. Well, ex I mean, yeah, I would basically, you should not use regular expressions unless you need to. Mm -hmm. So, um. There, there's one reason people sometimes use regular expressions, um, at, and it's to do with replace and replace all, because we have this. Um, so if you have, um, you can replace, um, if we did say Kelvin, Kelvin, mm -hmm. we could replace every K with an X. Now, if you were to run that expression, we're not in the REPL anymore, but what, if you're going to run that re expression, it's only going to replace the first one because it's mm -hmm. a string. So it's just going to be, uh, Kelvin, Kelvin. Um, and so if you want to make it replace every one, you have to do either replace all, or you have to make it a regular expression with a global scope like that mm -hmm. one. And mm -hmm. so most people will be uh, like a lot of people will be using replace with a global regex because that is literally the only way they can do it because replace all has a, uh, let's just pull up the, mm -hmm browser compatibility and the node compatibility specifically. Like the node compatibility for replace all is only node 15. Oh. So if you were on node uh, 12 or 14, mm -hmm. uh, replace all is just not something you could use. Yeah. Um, the browser support, browser support is good. So yeah. I, I wouldn't worry about that. But but a lot of times like in, in a framework like Nux, for example, if we were building and we need to still have node 14 compatibility, we cannot use replace all. Um, and that's not something that can be compiled um, well, I guess it could be a compiler, but it's it's not compiled out by um, most compilers. Um, mm -hmm. So you actually just have to use a regular expression with a global scope. But mm -hmm. I would say, if you're looking at this, um, Kelvin, Kelvin, replace versus mm -hmm. replace all K 
and x, without a doubt, this replace all with a string, I would say, is going to be faster. And you, again, you see, so only use a regex when you need to. Like if, wow. you, if you can get away with a, a string replacement or some other string utility, you're going to want to do that. Mm -hmm. Because really, regular expressions are really powerful, but at the same time, they are less performant. And, and just to show also why the transform of magic regex is important. So if I were to do some kind of um, uh, match, so I could do something like uh, my regular expression is going to be K. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to, to use it in there. Uh, and really, this, this doesn't matter at all. Mm -hmm. um, effectively, what magic regex does is it creates a regex from a string. Mm -hmm. So it, it basically does this and it has global flag like that. Mm -hmm. um, so this is going to be slower absolutely all the time because it's it's not statically. It's yeah. like it's, 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 yeah. it's, it's a function call that makes it happen. So if you want. What? What? <laughs> What's going on? What is that can't be right. Come on. No. It, what? That the static is slower than the new? That okay. can't be right. That absolutely can't be right. I've I've run my own tests and, and okay. that's not the case. Like mm -hmm. um new regex is 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 slower than than just writing it out. So I'm not completely sure what's going on there. Let's mm -hmm. just confirm it's valid JavaScript. Because sometimes if you're running performance testing and you have mm -hmm. code, no, that's working. If mm -hmm. you if you're running JavaScript and uh, performance testing and you have code that has a bug in it, mm -hmm. then um sometimes that will seem to be faster. Okay. Because if it throws the bug faster, then the other code does the real mm -hmm. full task. Um, yeah. and, you, and you're not actually checking that it has the right result at the end of it, um, you can basically get bugs very fast. Wow. You can yeah. throw errors very, very, very fast and, mm -hmm. uh, and not necessarily. So if I, if I were to type in, let's see, if I were to type in some wrong JS, is this tool going to tell me? Ooh, cool, it does. It, does, it doesn't let it work anyway. Mm. JavaScriptBenchmark.com. I'm totally, totally coming back here another time. It's, it's, yes, it's we have to check, the, check out what's going on. Um, yeah, this is cool stuff. And I was going to, I think we are way past time. Like I was going to see how, because, you know, in our first issue, we did Kelvin at Kelvin.com. They will max out Kelvin with all the X's. Now, if one will max out Kelvin and the domain of the email without the dot com, so it's going to be star, star, star on Kelvin at star, star, star dot com, or even just a bit of it. That's getting <laughs> crazy regex in there. <laughs> Well, I mean, we can give it a try. Let's see. Um, okay, here we go. So let's. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we are replacing the entire um, thing with uh, uh, with x's. Mm -hmm. um, now, in this case, we might want to have a slightly different um, regular expression. So we we might want to have something that. Uh, let me think. We might we if we want every bit of this except mm -hmm. the at to be escaped yeah. Yeah. we can actually really make, make this a lot simpler so we could basically say create regular expression car not not in say car not in at okay so we are mm -hmm. actually matching every character individually that's not in that's not that um, and what we are going to do instead is replace every single character that's not that with an X. Um, and we also need to make it global. And there we have mm -hmm. the entire email address masked. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, that, 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 that'll do it. That's giving us a okay. uh, global regular expression matching everything that's not an at symbol. Interesting. That is good. So how about we take out the .com from the mix? I'm just increasing <laughs> the boss level to this complexity, aren't I? Yeah. Okay. So let's say we want uh, every character not in at. Um, hmm. Well, I think we might do something. So we could do something like this. Oops. Um, That's a tricky one. So what are we wanting so we basically not to match.com 
maybe not yeah. here. Can we do that? Well, I think in this case, we probably do need to, we, we either need to do two. So our, our options are, we can do two passes. Okay. So we can basically the first pass, get everything that's not in .com and then replace everything that's not a, a, at. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and that's, that's very relatively simple, right? So it's, mm -hmm. um, it's basically, um, uh, but, but, but that, that's option one. Mm -hmm. um, option two is we can get the entire match um, in terms of groups. So effectively, uh, we can get as in Kelvin, mm -hmm. and then we can get Kelvin, and then uh, we just replace those bits individually. Um, and that's probably going to difficult to mm. that's going to be slightly more performant but i mean it, it you really have to to um mm -hmm. well yeah. here's how we would do each of those okay, okay. so the two passes if first we want to get everything but dot com we basically we, we want to say uh we want to get um any car um before uh Mm -hmm. So that is going to um, see we're, we're getting any anything that's not at dot, dot com, um, and I think why is that xx dot com? Oh. What is it? What is it matching? Right. Okay. Okay, that's going to match. Oh, I see. It's it's matching first the um, Kelvin at Kelvin, and then it's matching just an empty character. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay. Yeah, this is. That's going to. Oh, I see. What we we what we want is not times any. We want um, actually to be times between uh, one. Do I have more than? Let's see, what do we have? At least. Mm -hmm. So we want to match at least one time before uh, dot com. And now that's because uh, we don't want to match an empty string, mm -hmm. no characters. So this is actually now going to, a quaker is, is going wrong in a second. This is going to match it with just a single X. Mm -hmm. um, so so that, 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 would, that would match the entire piece. So that's okay. the first pass. So we can basically, um, take um, this in a function. So we're now getting that entire first match. Uh, and then with our, our other um, okay, so this, and that we, this actually don't need to be a global, I think. So we can then take our second one and do Mm -hmm. that. So mm. that this is the two, the two pass system so first it's getting everything um before dot com uh, and then it's replacing it with with an x now i mean obviously in this we're being super simple like in in any kind of production environment you, you shouldn't be assuming that there's going to be a dot com for example yeah. but i am just trying to show like, yeah. how the feature how the, how the library works nice. so that's the two pass the other thing is we could grab the two groups so we could do something like um and this is where we go back to what we had before. Um, so we basically want to have the, uh, we probably want the car not in this, times any, uh, and at, and, uh, and oh, uh, and uh, what do we want? Um, and uh, and then it should be before dot com. So it, we don't we don't actually match dot com. Mm -hmm. um, so this would probably be fine. We would then um, say uh, grouped. Grouped will just pull it in as a anonymous group. Uh, and then we also want to do the same with this one. 
So um, in, in other words, that, that's going to going to pull it in as a, uh, it's not going to give it a name like group start something, it's just going to capture it mm -hmm. uh, with brackets, um, with parentheses. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in this case, we should be getting Uh, we should be getting here um, sort of this kind of array and the, the uh, what are we getting? Yeah, we're having like two ends. Wonder why it matches the ends. Is this matching it for us? Oh, it, it is matching it for us. But what we actually want is that. What am I? Mm. Okay, what am I seeing? What I really want to see is these two groups to match more than an N. Um, mm -hmm. Because why would it match uh, at line start? It's maybe a helpful debugging step. Mm -hmm. Why is it matching that with an N? Oh. It is matching it now with Kelvin. Hmm, this is interesting. I want to have Kelvin and then I don't want to have an N. Yeah. Why is there an N? Is it? Anna N times uh I see um mm -hmm. So I think it's matching the n in kelvin.com, but mm -hmm. not the, what am I missing here? What is the actual regular expression we're generating? So that is right. Oh, before, yeah, that's also right. Yeah. It does look right. Something. Well, maybe this is the, uh, let's just try um, grouped as um, user and grouped as uh, domain and see what I'm missing. Okay, we have got user and domain and now it's actually working. Hmm. So okay. I'm not entirely sure what I was doing there. It might be a case of, of nested brackets. So it might be something like, um, and I would always say name name groups is safer because you're it's it's much clearer what's going on. Mm -hmm. In this case, ah, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the aha case, moments. Yeah, that's right. It, in this case, the issue is the um, is where the as is. So um, yeah. It's where the as is. And actually, I think it might might even be something I should make more intuitive in the library itself. Mm -hmm. um, so let's add a second to do. Um, right. OK, so th this will at least um, do, do what I want. So um, in mm -hmm. this case, it's going to match uh, the um, user and domain. And I would then just be able to, to pass in again a function and replace each of those at the end. So we, we'd do something like like um, do something like this. We want to replace uh, the oh um in this case, we get a um, we get a, a string, but we also get a little um, uh, set of okay. of um, objects. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we want to replace um, user with x and domain with x as well, that's and that's well. going to give us x at x dot com. Nice. The the um yeah. It seems to me actually the, the two pass method is probably the simplest one in this, in mm -hmm. this case. But. Yeah, it's good. Thank you. So, sorry, I have to, you know, we just battle tested Magic Web to like real world scenarios and stuff. 
And he did hold up his own. I like it. It's really cool. Great job, Daniel. Thank you. Yeah, I we we are totally out of time. And I'm just going to get us in here. So, yeah, thank you. So, this, I think we should... I'm definitely going to use Magic Regex. And because it compiles that to Regex, I could just, you know, get a sense of what I want to... Like a human friendly syntax and API to work with regex. And of course, it's going to give me the old regex string, which is also cool. So, yeah, thank you so much. So, before we go, do you want to plug anything or give us like a last statement on regular expressions, regex, or whatever you want to talk about? Go for it. Um, hey, well, uh, check out Next if you're mm -hmm. looking for a, a web framework. Um, even if you're using something else, I would love any ideas or suggestions mm -hmm. for improvement. Mm -hmm. um, it's fun to be part of a like a bigger ecosystem and uh, and sort of be pushing the boundaries of what's uh, what's possible to do. Yeah. Uh, nothing particular to plug. Um, mm -hmm. Just yeah, contact me if you've got any ideas or want to talk about anything. Yeah. So I guess that would be like on Twitter, right? To to contact you. Yeah. Yep. You can contact me at Daniel Zero on Twitter. Uh, or if you're on the next Discord or some of the other Discord servers I'm on, I'm I'm there as well as Daniel Brown. Yeah, thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you for your time.